few days ago, I set up this inverter. This thing can output 10,000 watts and it's under $1,700. And it has two MPPTs, which can handle a maximum of 10,000 watts. So the small SRNE inverter that I tested a few weeks ago, this is two of those combined in one. So right when I got it, I built this system to charge my Tesla. And straight from the terminals, I can do a continuous 40 amps at 240 volts. Now I've already put 200 kilowatt hours through it, charging my car in the last couple days. And it is blowing my mind how cheap this thing is. 10,000 watts. This is the same price as like an EG4 6000 XP, but you get almost double the output capacity. If you combine this with the budget server rack batteries like an EcoWorthy, you can run an entire house for really cheap. And so far it's been working, but I have a couple complaints. So first off, it doesn't have a PV disconnect, so you should add your own for safety. Next, this connection box is really small. On the 6000 XP and more expensive ones, it's a lot larger. Next, I have 2 watt cables, but you should use 4 watt cables, because these get pretty warm. They're within spec, but I'd rather have a large larger cable on there. Next, the communication for parallel operation is a serial cable. Are you joking me? They should at least have CAN bus or ethernet. I do not like this. Next, it smells so bad. For like the first few days, this thing smelled horrible. And I'm used to having a bad smelling inverter, but this thing was the worst I've ever tested. It made this whole shop smell so bad, I had to open up the doors constantly. And finally, it's actually getting better. I've had this on the wall for like a week now. Next, there are 68 options for the settings, which is fantastic and you don't need to use an app or a computer. And it's very easy to set up compared to like a 6000 XP, but it takes a long time to flip through all of these. But it does have some cool settings, including scheduled charging. You can use the BMS communication with different types of batteries to have a state of charge setting for discharge cutoff. Next, when I connected the Tesla charger, usually it doesn't know that it's on a floating system, but this one could tell that it had bad grounding. So I hooked up this grounding conductor and it actually fixed the issue. Usually this happens if you have a mobile connector and you have the neutral and the ground is not bonded, but here I didn't have that. So I was like, what's going on? So I connected a grounding conductor to a true earth ground and it fixed the issue. Next, there are no breakers for the AC output. There is one for the AC input and that input has to have 120 and 240 volts. So don't try to connect 120 volts to this thing because you need two hot conductors, two phases. If not, it will not work and you need the neutral. You have to have all four. Besides that, it's been fantastic. I always try to find the problems. That's my whole job. But so far, this has been working. And in a couple of weeks, I'll have a megawatt hour through it. Now, one of my friends on the forum that helps me run the forum has been running this exact model for a year and a half. And he hasn't had a single issue, not a single complaint. He hooks up cheap budget batteries, chins, 48 volt batteries that are on sale to this thing. And he now has a very powerful system for very cheap. And he didn't have to build a battery or anything. He bought everything off of Amazon. Now what's cool about this unit is even though it says Sun Gold Power on the front, this is made by SRNE. So there's lots of companies that sell this. They relabel it with their own brand. But they're all the same, especially if you have this display right here. If it looks like this, it's an SRNE. That's the best way to find out. Or you can open it up and look at the boards. But lately I just order them based off of the picture on the display. And sometimes the communication board can say SRNE, but I don't see it on this one. And some of my viewers said I was sleeping on these because I reviewed other Sungle power inverters and they were awful. But this one has been fantastic. And when I first saw this, I thought it was competing with the 6000 XP, but 10,000 watts, that's competing with the 12,000 XP. And that thing's $2,589. This thing is almost $1,000 less. Like I said, you don't have a PV disconnect and you don't have a breaker, but you could add those for very cheap, like 30 bucks and you'll save $1,000. And the 12,000 XP is fantastic, especially the Surge. And they're supposed to have new software with a new app, but it was supposed to be out like a week ago, but I still haven't heard back from them. But yeah, if you want something that's solid that you can program from the screen that you don't need to set up with an app from a very reliable company where people have been running these things for a long time, this is a fantastic option. 
and I'm gonna run it for as long as I possibly can. I'm probably gonna run the bunker vault next. I'll swap out the 12,000 XP and see how well it runs in there. The other one, the little brother of this with the hand truck system, I'm still running outside. It's like 110 degrees outside in a metal building and I still haven't had an over temperature or anything else. And I'm almost at a megawatt hour. A lot of people like that thing. People run it for a long time. So yeah, pretty impressed with this unit, especially for the price. And that's pretty much it for this video. I'm again late to the show and I'm gonna keep running this with the Tesla charger. So yeah, let's come back in a couple months and see how well it does. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next video. Bye.